Hostile Witness. My name is Daniel Vallis, and welcome to our channel. Thank you for all those who send in tips and news articles and things that you find. Together we are watching. This is a radar ministry. We report and try to get a better idea of what's going on right now and an understanding of the times. And as we move forward, we refine the information and we vet the information and we explore the information and we report it to you. So again, thank you to all those who chip in your information, your feedback, your thoughts, and contribute to this watching ministry. One thing that we've been exploring and trying to get a better idea of is the idea of constellations and the borders. But the constellations and their borders are very well established, and they were established back in 1930. So they've been around for a while, and they are internationally recognized. And so when we consider that these stars tell a message around the world, we do have to consider that an internationally recognized standard for the borders of the constellations, there's nothing wrong with going with that. Especially since the main reason they organized all the constellations into a internationally recognized system is because it was so confusing before, because there was no standard. And as new astronomy discoveries were made, they realized the need to have a standard. And when we think back to the Garden of Eden, mankind was created to take dominion of the earth, to explore it, and to master it. And so there's nothing wrong with the way mankind can organize the constellations or put them out and organize and classify different areas of science. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as we have nothing in Scripture that tells us we should not follow something, then we have no reason why we should not follow this modern, internationally recognized classification system that's been around for almost a hundred years now. And we have been looking at the border of Virgo and Judah, right now Leo, and it does appear that one of the best sources for Jupiter's live position and data, especially in relation to the border, is best accurately described by the website The Sky, which presents the astronomical data in real time. And they emphasize that they use the high quality data sets provided by the JPL Horizons Ephemeris Service. So this is done in real time and this uses a much richer data set than most astronomy programs and especially astronomy apps, which use a limited data set. So this is done in real time and pretty much the highest quality data set you can get straight from JPL. And so this is what we've been looking at and other programs with less information and not real-time information, they've been reporting that Jupiter is already in Virgo, but the sky with their real-time information is reporting that it is still in the constellation Leo. And this is a screenshot from today, August 9th. And so this is a great website to check out for the live information. We'll have a link in the description box for that. But they present a lot of information and data so you can verify all this yourself. But they show that Jupiter is still within Leo. You can track them live. And then they also show, looking forward, that on August 11th, from Jerusalem's position, at 2.55 in the morning, Jupiter will still technically be within Leo. But then at 3 o'clock in the morning, it will have entered into the constellation Virgo. So with the prophecy, we've seen that there are two main constraints, being within Judah and being between the feet. And we've seen that both those conditions will be true as long as Jupiter is within the constellation Leo. So based on our best understanding and information that we have here, it appears those constraints will still be viable all the way up until August 11th at 3 a.m. in the morning, Jerusalem time. And it will be internationally recognized as so. You know, this isn't me saying this. This is a JPL data saying it is still in the constellation Leo up until that point. So I'm just reporting what the radar shows. And so 3 a.m. in the morning on August 11th from Jerusalem would translate to midnight between August 10th and Thursday, August 11th UTC time. For those of us in the Americas, for example, that would translate to 7 p.m. August 10th for Central Standard Time, where I'm at right now. And then for Portland, Oregon, for example, that would equate to 5 p.m. August 10th. So basically it's ending in the latter half of August 10th for those in the Americas. But August 10th, midnight, UTC time. And according to the JPL data, that is the highest extent of Jupiter being within Leo. And in our last video, we looked at how the enemy is the primary one drawing attention to this time with 
the attention they are drawing to Leo and Jupiter. They're the ones who've been drawing the most attention to this time, particularly the 10th, when these constraints will be running out. They've been drawing the most attention to it, not me. I'm just merely giving you the biblical Christian perspective of why they are so excited right now and why we should be excited because we are expecting Shiloh to gather his people. The redemption of the purchased possession. That's what we are expecting. That is our hope. And the enemy also knows that that time is going to mark when they are unrestrained though. That's why they're so excited. And we talked yesterday of how they used the beginning of the Olympics to bring up the mention of Leo DiCaprio with the UN climate change speech. But then someone sent in a news article that they also pushed Leo again, again at this Olympics, pointing out and making a news story about this Leonardo DiCaprio lookalike nabbed an Olympic medal for archery in Rio. They are making a big deal about how one of the athletes there looks very closely like Leonardo DiCaprio. And they showed the athlete there and then did a little comparison of how he does have a likeness to Leonardo DiCaprio. But again, pointing out two times in just two days really, emphasizing Leo. Leo again, and the same character that they've tied a lot of other things to as well, with the return and the UN and climate and all that. Emphasizing it. They are really pushing this whole concept of Leo right now and all the lion. It's not me. They're pushing it way more than I am. And the person who emailed me this list, they made the comment that normally this would not be news. You would see it in the news and think, so what? But when we see the background of why we should be looking at this time, when we see that the enemy is pushing Leo right now and really drawing attention and pushing it, going overboard pushing it, then that raises some serious eyebrows. Things that would not normally be news, when we see them done in a systematic manner, that catches our attention. Because the enemy knows what time it is, and they're bringing forward all the messaging that they've been laying down over the past few months with the mystery of iniquity, and that there's about to be some major changes in the world, bringing all that forward right now, using this one person as a psychological anchor for the subconscious, bringing a lot of that messaging forward. And remember, he is the one at the UN who made the big note of that the world, at this biggest signing ceremony that they had ever, he made this speech that there's going to be an upheaval and a massive change is required now. One that leads to a new collective consciousness. A new collective evolution of the human race. Keep that in mind. A new collective evolution of the human race. This is what they are expecting to do when they are unrestrained. We talked about that in our purple videos. Inspired and enabled by a sense of urgency from all of you. At that point when he made that speech, they knew time was running out. And here we are right at the finish line and they're bringing up all this messaging and the anchors for all those messaging up again and really pushing it, making sure you get the hint that Leo, hello, Jupiter, Lion, Lion Day. They know they are at the end. They know what time it is. They know we are at the finish line. And we talked yesterday about the video game. Everybody's gone to the rapture. And several people remarked that they don't see anything about the rapture in it besides the name. That's because they're not portraying the Christian version of the rapture. They're not going to be pushing that. They are pushing and conditioning the New Age concept of rapture. They have their own concept of rapture. Going to the next level, becoming light beings, ascendancy. They have their own idea of rapture. And it's partly going to be part of the Great Deception explaining the rapture, what happened. So they're pushing their concept of the rapture and what they want their disciples to have a view of the rapture about. But again, tying it to August 11th, and especially in past tense, everybody's gone to the rapture. Pushing that on August 11th. In context of all the other things that they've been pointing out to the Shiloh sign of Jupiter and Leo. And just yesterday on the 8th, there was another story about another lion attack at a zoo. And you may have noticed in the past few months, there's been a number of lion or big cat attacks really standing out. And so it's very interesting that there was a news story yesterday about this one as well. But then the day was National Day for Singapore. And Singapore is called the Lion City. And it celebrates its independence on August 9th today. Very suspicious that all this lion messaging is coming together right now. And in addition to that, someone else sent in that the Lion King, which we've been talking about, this high-profile Broadway show is starting in Portland, having their opening night, guess when? On August 10th. Yes, the Lion Day. 
Because this is who they're getting ready for. Their Lion King. Their King to Return. Their Sun God. Apollo. Apollyon. Their Lion. This is who they're getting ready for. This is why there's been a big push for gateways and arches and triumphal entries and palm entries and phoenixes and lions. They're the ones who are pushing all this. And we covered back in the end of February and early March that they were starting to do this several months ago, drawing attention to Leo and Jupiter and laying all this messaging down. They've been doing it for quite a while. I've just been pointing out to you why they are doing so. Because they know the biblical time. They know the sign in Shiloh. And as Christians, we're watching it from a different perspective than they are, but they know what time it is. But they have a very coordinated, systematic messaging pointing toward the culmination of this time with the lion concept, their lion king. And the enemy has been practically breaking their arm, waving the red flag, trying to get their disciples' attention, drawing it to their lion messaging to this time where we are right now. They're the one doing all the messaging. They know the importance of this deadline day, which is the last day for the prophetic constraints. And Satan knows the character of God, that he is very gracious and he is very long-suffering. And he will wait till the very last minute. The Bible tells us that. He is very long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. He will wait as long as he can. When we read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, the angels told him that judgment was coming and that it was time for judgment. And the angels waited until the last possible minute and then physically grabbed Lot and his wife and his daughters and practically dragged them out of the city. They waited till the last minute. God is very long-suffering. And Satan is banking on that. We are down to the wire. We are approaching a day on August 10th when this constellation, when this chamber in the south, so to speak, will be bookended by Jupiter leaving the chamber at the same time that the sun is entering the chamber. Two unique, precise celestial events right on this exact same day, finishing it out. And drawing our attention to the uniqueness of it. And we are expecting the gathering, the harvesting of Shiloh's beloved, his people, those who put their faith and trust in him. And this was Paul's expectation, the one who wrote about the rapture. He equated it with this prophecy. Paul was very familiar with the Shiloh prophecy. And he knew that it was not fulfilled when Christ came. When Christ came, he died and opened the way, calling us to obedience and repentance and faith in him. He started the gathering process, but it has not been finished and it was not fulfilled then. And Paul knew that. Remember, when Paul got saved, he went around teaching that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. He was going around telling them that Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of the Shiloh passage. He was very well familiar with the Shiloh passage, and he knew it had not been fulfilled at Christ's coming. It had been started, but the gathering part had not yet been fulfilled. This is very important. This is our hope. And he tied it in the Second Thessalonians 2 passage to the rapture. The rapture is just a colloquial term for the gathering of Shiloh's people, those who put their faith and trust in him. Primarily, that's going to be Gentiles, but Jews as well. All those who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And this is what we have the hope of right now, is this fulfillment of the Shiloh passage when he is going to gather his people. And we talk about all of this in our Shiloh booklet, so if you're new to this channel or haven't yet studied it, definitely check out the links in the description box. Print it out, study it, read it several times. There's a lot of information in there to catch you up to speed on what we're looking at right now. But then also the backstory that goes all the way back to the first and second pages in your Bible. A prophecy about the tapestry of redemption. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. And we go over this with the garden prophecy, but then also break down the fulfillment of the Shiloh passage. And how Jesus Christ came to be a light to the Gentiles. And it was Paul's understanding that the gathering had not happened yet. It had started with the calls to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. But the physical aspect of the gathering had not yet been fulfilled. And this is what we see signaled right now. And we've seen the story rehearsed over the past few months. We are expecting the harvesting, the gathering, the snatching away of Shiloh's beloved. Ephesians 1.12 That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. 
Christ calls us to obedience, to repent of our sins and put our faith and trust in His finished work, to put our trust fully in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Shiloh, Emmanuel, God with us, God providing Himself as a Lamb to be our mediator who will one day stand and give testimony on our behalf that He alone has paid for our sins. And notice that it describes the salvation experience when we heard the gospel, when we heard the good news that Jesus Christ offers the gift of salvation. And if we accept his free gift and his offer to pay for our sins, when we put our faith and trust in him, then we are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. And that's a legal financial term. But notice that it specifies until the redemption of the purchased possession. And this goes back to the Shiloh gathering. When Christ came and died on the cross, he started the gathering process, which was starting in the spiritual realm of the call to obedience and repentance and putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That started the church period. And for the past 2,000 years, people have been putting their faith and trust in Christ. We have already been paid for. We are the purchased possession. Our sins have already been paid for in full. But we are waiting for the redemption of the purchased possession. The Day of Atonement has already been fulfilled by Christ dying on the cross, Hebrews chapter 9. Payment has already been made. But we are waiting for the redemption of the purchased possession, the gathering of the purchased possession, the taking possession of the purchased possession. Let me illustrate. I love going to antique stores. I used to do a lot of shopping for props for a lot of video projects that we worked on. And so I love going to different antique stores and furniture and just looking at all the stuff. And usually it's my luck when I see something that I like, I, I go over to it. But what I see is a sold tag on it. And that has saved me a lot of money too, by the way. But what does a sold tag mean? It means that object that is still in the store has already been purchased. Someone's already paid for it. It's sold. It's no longer for sale. You can't buy it. But it's still in the store. The owner has not picked it up yet. They've gone back to the house. They're going to get a pickup truck. They're going to make room in their living room or whatever. They are coming back one day to pick up their purchased possession. But they've sealed it at the store by putting a sign on it saying sold. I'm going to be coming back and picking this up one day. And that is what we are waiting for. All those who put their faith and trust in Christ, we are already paid for in full. All we are waiting for now is the physical pickup, the physical redemption of the purchased possession. We are bought with a price. We are not our own. We are the purchased possession when we put our faith and trust in Christ. But we are still waiting for the physical redemption, the physical gathering. We have been spiritually gathered through obedience in his word, the gospel. But now we are waiting for the second part, the physical gathering of the purchased possession, the redemption, the pickup of the purchased possession. And the passage emphasizes, ye were sealed. When we got saved, God in a sense put a sold tag on us. We were bought. We were paid for in full. We are no longer our own. When we got saved, we were paid for in full. Christ is not making payments on us. No, we were paid for in full. The tag says sold. It paid for. He has the receipt. And one day, he has promised that he's going to come back and pick up. He's going to redeem his purchased possession. John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. On our soul ticket, it's marked that we are sold to Jesus Christ, Shiloh, Messiah, the Redeemer, our Beloved. He is the one who has paid for us. We are no longer our own. We are bought with a price. And Jesus Christ is the one who paid for us, and he is the one who bought us. He lives in heaven, and that's where we're going one day. And he calls it his father's house. And one day he's going to take us to his father's house. He's going to personally come in the clouds and pick us up and gather us to him so that we will be where he is, in his father's house. He did make a note and he told us, I'm going to need to make a place. I'm going to have to make place in my father's house. And I'm going to make a special place just for you. 
So I'm going to go away for a while. I'm going to make a place for you. After I have paid for you, I am going to go away for a while. But I'm going to make a place for you in my father's house. And I will come again and pick you up. The estimated time of arrival is going to be announced. And if you are listening and paying attention and watching, you will hear me coming. You will see the day approaching. And so this is what we are waiting for right now. We are waiting for the redemption, the pickup of the purchased possession. If you have not yet, definitely watch our video, The Redeemed Possession, which goes in depth of what Christ has done for us. The church, the collective term for those who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, is bought with a price. We are no longer our own. Christ loves us so much, and he was willing to make us his own and pay the price to purchase us, to redeem us, to buy us back. And Christ told us when he was coming back, and gave you examples of the days of Noah and Lot before judgment, while people were still carrying on as though life went on. That is when he told us he would be coming back to gather, to redeem the purchased possession. And there have been a number of other prophetic signs that he gave to as well, and he told his disciples, I'm coming back within this time frame here, the last generation. And we find ourselves in the exact final year on that ballpark figure that we've been looking at, but then seeing scores of other prophetic signs telling us this is the time when we are expecting the redemption of the purchased possession. We have seen the Star of Bethlehem also telling us that the King, the Redeemer, Shiloh, who they pointed to the first time, these reminder signs are telling us that he is coming back again. And we saw unique precision with the way they were placed and pointing to where they landed again a year later, drawing attention to the specific days of Noah and Lot too as well. And we are still well within those days. And that has brought our attention to the sign in Shiloh, the final lap with the final countdown, drawing us to where we are right now. And so as we have heard over the past year, the trumpet warnings, Behold the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. We are also reminded that our beloved has told us to be ready for pickup when he comes back. So definitely download our booklet, Be Ye Ready, which covers and reviews a lot of those instructions and guidelines that Christ told his disciples. As the bride of Christ, we should make ourselves ready for our Redeemer, for our beloved. And how we live for him will be a reflection of our gratitude and love for all that he has done for us. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. We are a purchased possession. We are a redeemed possession. And we are waiting for the gathering of Shiloh's people. We are waiting to be called home. We are waiting for the trumpet call when he calls us to assembly. Revelation 4.1 After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither. Have you heard the trumpet call at midnight that the bridegroom is drawing near? Have you heard the trumpet calls at midnight telling us we need to rise up? We need to cast things off of our life. We need to trim our lamps. We need to shine bright. We need to rise up and go out to meet the bridegroom halfway. Now is the time when we must be shining brightest for the one we love. And how we shine now will be reflected through all eternity. Serve Christ first and highest above all else. Maranatha. Maranatha.